We want to say good morning, good morning, good morning. Um, welcome to Understanding the Bible in Matthew Assembly, located right here in Clayton, Delaware, specifically 355 West Duck Green Road. There we go, right here in Clayton, Delaware. We want to say welcome to all of you. The service has already begun in person, but we just uh, got allowed the uh, time for you to open up each other the online portion. We want to say welcome. Praise God. You know, God has something for you today. Amen? So the fact that you chose to turn on your iPad, your laptop, or whatever it was, to receive from God. Make sure you're awake, alert. Make sure you're doing your screenshots or, or you're writing down because God has another message for you today. He prepared a meal just for you and I and all of us to eat and sup so we can grow. Amen? So pray to God you chose to do that. Um, feel free to always come on down and join us, assemble with us in person. Um, you can come and receive. Also, if you have kids, they would also be receiving as well in our children's ministry called Chosen Generation, where they receive the same type of principle for the message, but on their level as well. So they'll go in and then they'll go ahead and receive on their level. Also, if you are led to sow into God's kingdom and you need an avenue, you can sow through UTBAA. Um, you can go to Givelify.com and um, for a second. You can go to Givelify.com, look under donors, and then look for UTBAA. Amen. That's only if you're led to sow. Not make them do that. That's that's only between you and God. And you can't give you an avenue to be able to do it. You know, you can't just throw your money up in the air and give it to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you throw it up physically in the air, it's gonna come right back down. Amen. So you wouldn't do it because God, the only way God operates in this earth is through people. So the way to do that is through his ministries to be able to do that. Amen. So the service has already begun. We want to bring back the worship team to help cultivate this gown. Okay. Woo. To help cultivate this ground, <laughs> to help get, to get ready for God's word. Amen. Amen. You're bringing the worship team, so we want to say welcome, welcome, welcome. Amen. You have to stand and worship with us. <laughs> You are here, moving in love me. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are waiting.
All right, so backdrop is Jesus was, uh, God came to him, Jairus, the daughter was uh, healed. He said, I can't come, come heal my daughter. So Jesus started walking towards, you know, his house so he can start um, going to heal her. In the middle, I think you know, the woman with the issue of blood came, touched him with a garment. Um, she got healed in a new way. So they, and then at that point in time, while Jesus was talking to her because she had touched the hem of his garment, she got healed. She had been, you know, experiencing the initial cycle for about 12 years, and she got immediately healed. Praise the Lord. So while that's going on, other people come back from the guy's crib saying, hold up, don't even, don't even bother because he's dead, all right? So here we go. While he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the J. Iris, the ruler of the synagogue, the J. Iris. While he was still speaking, when he talked to the woman with the issue of blood, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? Now, Jesus was already on his way to heal him. Already, he was always walking. He got stopped by a woman issue of blood, talked to her. Now, he's about, about to go back on the road to start to try to, uh, to go down to J.R.'s house to heal her. And these other people come back from her crib like, oh, don't trouble her any further. She's, you know, she's dead. Okay? Now, see that. Now, see this part. As soon as. Everybody say it, as soon as. As soon as. as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken from those people saying, don't bother, don't bother coming, don't bother teaching any longer, she's dead. He said to the ruler of the synagogue, don't be afraid, only believe. This, we got to kiss this principle here. When you're hearing things, if it's not something in line with what God has for you, you got to speak against that. Yeah. Jesus didn't, he, he didn't say that Jesus spoke to the people. He spoke right to the person who was supposed to believe in. They can be saying all that chat. He spoke right to that person. Don't do it. You stay focused. You believe. Because yeah. he didn't want any of those words to get into that guy's ear gates yeah. and, and get into his heart. And he permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, which were three, three of his uh, disciples that were really close with him. He was a close to all of them, but they were kind of closer-ish. Um, John, the brother of James. All right? Uh, then he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw a tumult, which is like a lot of people crying and uh, making a lot of noise, and, and those who wept and wailed loudly. When he came in, he said to them, Why make this commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And we covered this in the other series. We talked about that. When you chose to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, they look at what we call, like when we go to celebration of life services, i.e. funerals, and we see the body there. That's the, that's the physical body. But we understand, the Bible says, the absent of the body be present with the Lord. So that body, if they are a Christian, that body, we talked about this before, is going to be resurrected. So that body, Jesus looked at that as sleeping. Why? Because after Jesus comes back, the dead in Christ are going to rise, <clears throat> excuse me, and then those who were previously dead, let's say a Christian, that you may have known like three years ago, that transition, his or her spirit and soul are with Jesus right now. That body is his temporarily sleep. Because after Jesus does that, when he comes back and dead in Christ will rise and those that are alive will rise with him, you're going to be supernaturally merged. That body is going to be supernaturally merged with his spirit and soul again. So that being the case, we talked about this, that person is not dead, they're just sleeping. You got it? That's why he said that. All right? Now I know down here we call it death and die. I know that's what we call it. But as believers, I think God channeled us in the other series to say, be like me. Yeah. For a believer, Call that time period sleep. All right? But if, if you need more, just go to that other series. All right? um, and they did ridicule him. Now they're teasing Jesus. They say, ah, oh, she's dead. Why are they, why are they messing with him? They ridiculed him. Uh, but when he uh, put them all outside, uh-oh. So if you in faith about something, very, very important. Only tell people who you think might be in agreement with things, certain things and desires you have. That's number one, because you don't need nobody speaking in your ear about something. You, you, let's say you believe for a new job, and somebody else, you don't want to hear somebody else say, you can't get that job? No, you tell people, you be real strategic about the people you tell who you want that new job for, because you're only trying to get a life for a dream. To... Jesus did it, but you don't want to be hearing people in your ear saying, oh, you can't get that job. All right. Wow. But if that happens to be, in this particular case, you, you, go, you go to a hospital for somebody you believe in for, if it, I don't care if it's, I don't care if it's your mother. 
Meaning, let's say you believe in Cousin John. If your mom comes in, love mom. But if she, if if John decides that he, because first has to be with John, if he has to, when his own will decides he wants to be built. But if he is, and he wants you to be in agreement, we need people in that room that want to believe for that. Yeah, right. We don't need people when they're getting ready to prepare the uh, the, 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 the the program. Yeah. What do you call that? The oh, obituary. Yeah. 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 yeah, we don't need that. Not if you, not if you wanting to stay alive. Now that doesn't mean you kick mom out your life. It is that mom in this moment, in whatever diplomatic spirit, seasoned words way. Yeah. Mom, would you be open to going and get some tea right now? What does this have to do? Okay. All right. And they ridiculed him, but when they when he had put them all outside, he took the father and the mother of the child and those who were with them and entered where the child was lying. Then he took the child by the hand and said to her, Talithia Kuma, which we talked about before in terms of the Bible, the original Bible was written in three languages, the Hebrew, the Aramaic, and the Greek. Um, and this was like, that's Aramaic right there. Uh, which is translated, little girl, I say to you, arise. Immediately the girl arose and walked, for she was 12 years old of age. For she was 12 years of age. And they were overcome with great amazement. Now we learned in the other series, we discovered According to our faith being unto us. Amen. Right? We learned that. So that's exactly why Jesus said to him, with all those words that came up with that bad report, he said, don't be afraid. You believe. Jesus needed him to stay focused and believe. Yeah. Would this have happened if that wasn't the case? That's why we got to stay focused and not believe it. Amen? But today we're dealing with words. All right? Now, some comp our companion text, Matthew 12, 36 through 37, New King James Version. But I say to you, uh-oh. Everybody, everybody just to your ears. You gotta hear this. Alright? But I say to you that for every idol, when you talk about idol, it's about the, in the Greek that's argos, that means inactive, you see it, useless, barren. Every idol should be word, men may speak, they will give an account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words. <laughs> you will be justified, and by your words, you will be condemned. Every idle word, every idle. So we, as a, as, a, as a body of Christ, we have to get to the point where we're not walking around just saying things. We have to be intentional about the words we're speaking. And you may say, Pastor, it's not that serious. I'm sure you believe the Bible. When we walk around saying things that are useless, we're going to have to give an account. We talked about this series with regards to, we understand there's going to be a judgment seat for Christians. And we're going to be judged just for the things we do good and bad in the body. We understood that's different from the great white throne judgment for those who choose not to receive Jesus. But for those of us who choose to receive Jesus, it's a judgment for us as well. Because they want to know what we did as a Christian, both good and bad. And that, now, we, here's the saving grace that that's not to determine whether we're going to hell or not, because that's already been settled. Right. That's to determine the amount of rewards we receive or don't receive, the things we do good and bad in the body. So we got to take this idle words thing seriously. Because you, you want to hear that well done. Plus, you're going to find a little later, you, this, Holy, this Holy Spirit is moving in you. You want your words to have impact and do the things you want them to do. After a while, if you just keep saying things that are useless or general, then the Spirit's not going to know what to do. But you just said you didn't mean those other words, so how do I know what? We'll get into it. All right? I mean, God's looking for this series is to get us to a place where we allow the Holy Spirit to keep us alert regarding every word before we speak um, that's around you in the atmosphere for ministry, right? and also that you choose to unconsciously or consciously receive. That's the objective. That we, Holy Spirit keeps us alert about every word that before we speak that's around us in the atmosphere about whether we choose to receive something or not, and your choice to unconsciously or consciously receive. All right?
Words are important. Everybody say words are important. Okay? There you go. There you go. So now, here's a what if. What if, in a, what, if a, what would happen if in the Bible, God would say things like, psych. Just playing. How will we be able to count on him? How will we know whether that scripture can be applied? And then later on, he says, nah, I'm just playing with that. It's not again. And as Christians, we're called to grow to be more and more like Christ. So the Father didn't do that. Jesus, the Son, didn't do that. And the Holy Spirit doesn't do that. You got it? The same, you gotta be intentional. Right? You gotta be intentional with our word. All right. Another what if, like, you know, what if, what would happen if the only God, only words God spoke in the word were all negative? Would that attract you? You're like, this is great. I don't know if I want to do this Christianity thing. Everything is in. God, God will present realities if we don't do some things. But his words are full of promises and blessings and reality. Spiritual reality. God won't do those things, so as a believer, we shouldn't do them. So we shouldn't walk around just speaking negative words. Okay? These are some what ifs. Alright, now, here's a revelation piece. Proverbs 18, 21. A lot of familiar scripture. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. That's a scripture that is serious. So we have to understand, when we talk about death, we're talking about negative words. So you have to make sure you get to a point where you're not speaking negative words. You know, there are a lot of kids who have to walk in forgiveness of their parents because of some of the things that parents spoke over their kids. You ain't never going to be nothing. You're this, you're that. Nah, mm -mm. you can't do that. We need to be speaking life. Because both are in the power of our tongue. We're going to see a little later. God creates with his mouth. Yeah. And we have been given his power, so we need to be creating our destiny with our mouths. Led by the Spirit in us. So we got to get to the point where we just don't look at words like as casual anymore. This is why, this is why we are to grow and develop. That's a good thing. It's not that don't get in condemnation about any words you may have spoken before. And certainly if you're God is speaking to you about asking forgiveness, please do that. But this is from this point forward. Alright? Now, words are more than just sounds. They're spirit going out and doing something. So we have to not treat words as just something that we learn about the ABCs and those kind of things. That's all cool. That's all cool. But, but you know, we gotta understand. I think we said it before, you know, that whole thing, sticks and stones may break my bones, but it may, no, work. no, words do hurt. They can hurt your life for the future, and they can hurt somebody's soul right in the moment. That's another lie that we brought up on. Words do hurt. So we got to make sure we are intentional, all right? Words are more than just sound. Your spirit going out and doing something. Every time you speak something, it's going out in the atmosphere and doing something. Now, now, now I'm not talking about this, this recent thing we hear about, uh, Speaking in the atmosphere, you know? not not that not that broad thing that has no connection with God. It's a it's a good principle because they're getting it from God, but they're just throwing it up. Well, anyway, from a spiritual perspective, amen. All right, but let's look, look at some proof text. John six and sixty three, New King James version. It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh, I mean, about the flesh, we're talking about that carnal nature of us. The part of us that still wants to sin. What? Is that the part of me that wants to sin? Yeah. Yeah. But that's, and that's after you got saved. See, when we get saved, we're on one track. We're, we're locked in, we're good. As long as we continue to stay with Christ, we're good. But then there's the other side of the road where we're being sanctified. We're being stripped away and being developed to be more and more like Christ. Does that make sense? That's why that's happening, because when we got saved, our spirit got renewed, but our soul and our body didn't get saved. So there's a part of that carnal nature that still wants to do some sin. 
So our development is to grow and get the word in us so when those thoughts come that we don't do those things. But that's a development process until we go to be with the Lord. Amen? We can be perfected in areas. That makes sense? We can get it, right? The spirit of gives us gives life. The flesh profits is nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. Jesus spoke spirit words. Alright? God, there's more than just words, there's spirit going out. I mean, more than just containers. Words, uh, more than just sound. Words of spirit going out doing something. Now let's, now, let's, now let's have some proof checks. So this one thing that's a, you know, say this, but it's important that we understand the connection here between God's power and the power he's given us. So as a believer, uh, you've been given the power through God, through the Holy Spirit, to have the same type of power God has. Now, you're not God. We're not God. But when we choose to receive Jesus, our Lord and Savior, we have been engrafted with that power. Wow. So you just like, think about it. I think a lot of you know with Adam. Adam was able to name animals and speak things. That came directly from God. Well, we had that same power. Even though that afterwards he, he you know, committed to sin and the fall of mankind, Jesus came to bring us back to that same right power that we had. So the words, when God spoke things and they were so, you can speak things and it be so. Through the power of God. Okay? Now, by the words of your mouth. Now, let's look at some proof text. You gotta understand that you have the power that God has given you. So it's not just you walking around. So there's some proof text. You can look at Genesis 1. And you can use these as references. Genesis 1, 3 through 15. God said it and it was so. Alright, God so now we just understand that connection between God's power and our power, and He's connected it. God said things and it was so. Let the, you know, God said, uh, let there be light and there was light. Alright? He spoke that. He spoke it. He didn't just think it, he didn't just blink his eye, he didn't just snap his finger. He spoke it. You got it? Okay? Another proof text, Romans 8, 16 through 17. We are heirs of God. And we are joint heirs with Christ Jesus. So the same power they have, we have. Amen. We have to embrace that because it's not for our uh, glorification. No, it's for us to do some work down here. Amen. And for our own lives. You know, if you go into some challenge at work, you don't have to just sit and wonder and worry. You can do exact when Jesus came against the storm, he didn't do a whole bunch of fretting and worrying. He didn't do any. He just spoke to it. We have that same power. Right? But life is a choice journey, you gotta choose to believe it. Again, right now we're connecting us. God has power, and he's connecting us with his power. Alright, another proof text we wrote for Romans 8, 9 to 11. Uh, the power of it is all done through the power of the Holy Spirit uh, in us and with us. And in Luke 10, 19, God has given us authority to trample over snakes and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means harm us. We talk about snakes and scorpions, that's symbolic of, you know, demonic forces. So we have to understand, this is some proof text here to say God has power. When we choose to receive this, he's given us power. And then we can implement that power. All this comes through the words of our mouth. When you first get saved... Bible is clear. If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Yeah. That's it. Period. End of story. Obviously, that's come with sincerity of heart. But part of you getting saved is you had to confess that right. Jesus was Lord. You couldn't just think it. You had out of the abundance of the heart that now speaks the word says. Mm -hmm. So if it was really in your heart that you really wanted Jesus to be your Lord, you believe that God raised it from the dead, and you confessed it with your yeah. mouth. Not yeah. with your elbow, not just what you're thinking. Your words are powerful. Yeah. It got you saved. Yeah. You, don't, you don't stop you. I know the good thing always like this. You got to know, understand this. No one can stop you but you. Come on. Embrace that. Not the man. If you're a female, not the man. Uh, not the race. Not the government. No one can stop you but you. You got to receive that. No one stopped Jesus for his plan that God had for him. You got to receive that. Obviously, this is not a thing for you to go out and, and go weird. 
But when you are in tune with the Holy Spirit, you got God in your life, no one can stop you but you. You get a hold of God's principles and his promises and you implement them in your life, you can speak things regarding you and your family and those around you and for other people. Whether it's you know, want a different job, or you have to want a car, till you told her. No one can stop you but you. So as believers, let this be a new day that we no longer complain about the man or about whomever, saying they stopped me from getting the job. No. Now, they may have been a conduit that the devil tried to use, That's all right. but then we just read Luke 10, 19, or just reference it. God's giving you authority to trample over snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall harm you. So, I understand you may not have gotten that job, or you may not have gone to the school you went to. Take the learning and see where was it, not that God, where was it that I may not have understood something in God's word. Because I should have gotten this. And you're going to learn in the faith series, maybe it's still on its way. If I stay in faith. But you control that. Amen. Yeah. 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 All right, points to lock in, points to lock in. We can create our circumstances power positively or negatively with our words. Think back, think, if you think about where you are now, I don't care where you are, not just physically, things, goals you may have in life and those kind of things, biblically guaranteed that where you are was in part created by your mouth. Something you said, if you track that back, something you said, whether it's, you may be in a great place, But this is not time for condemnation. This is a learning to say, wow. Okay. Or you embrace some words that you didn't need to. That may have been spoken over your lives. Or you may have embraced some words that you needed to. To help fulfill you. Words are powerful. Alright, the law is now here's the thing. The speaking piece, the law is based on a cumulative area with regards to words. So we gotta understand, you don't just say something and all of, a, all of a sudden in terms of it having a bad impact, it has a cumulative effect over time. So you can reference the scripture James 3, 3 through 4, you put a bit in a horse's mouth. If everyone ever looks at the image of a bit, you may have seen like if you ever watch horse racing or horses or whatever, they put that little silver, they call it a bit, right? And it's tied, it's in the horse's mouth and it's tied to the rope or straps. I'm not a horse racer, I'm just going to say right. So, but that bit, in comparison to the size of a horse, even a pony is small in comparison to the size of a horse. But you turn that bit, it's going to turn that horse. Now, it may take a little bit of time, depending on how you drag or whatever, where you're trying to go. But if you're trying to go left, you're going to turn that thing left. Does that make sense? So that being the case, you put a bit in the horse's mouth, and it's going to move the way you want it to go. Does that make sense? So this takes a cumulative effect. Same type thing with a rudder. A lot of, a lot of you may have seen TV shows uh, like a rudder on a ship. It's that thing that looks like a steering wheel. You know what I mean? You got the spikes or the prongs, whatever you want to call them. All right? And so, if you ever look at the size of that rudder, in comparison to the ship, you're like, how is this thing moving this big metal thing? Again, it's a cumulative effect. When that thing gets moved, it may take a little while. It may take some time for that ship to finally go the opposite way, but you keep turning, it's going to happen. So that being the case, it may, something negative may not happen the very first time you say it, or well, used to say it, but over time that has that cumulative effect. So what that means is, if you really don't want your ankle to be killing you, don't say your ankle oh, is killing you. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. oh, you may say, oh, that's just, oh, I'm just saying it. Isn't, didn't we just talk about the idle words? Right. If you keep doing that cumulative effect, it's going to have an impact over time. That's a negative word. Why not say my ankle is healed? It may not feel healed in the moment, but you're speaking life to that thing, and that spirit gets down in there, and over time, that's what you want. You want that shit to go right, you're going to turn it right. It may take some time, but it's going to happen. Words are powerful. Words are powerful. But, you know, reference uh, James 3 through 4. Alright? Now, is, is God's part that we have to do in this, and it's our part, all right? 
God's part. We want the Holy Spirit to place a warning. Good thing remember this. Place a warning, a scripture, uh, in us. So that when you may feel like saying your ankle is killing me, you want the Holy Spirit to be like, eh, 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 don't say it, don't say it, eh, eh. Holy Spirit's going to put that, that, that alarm in you, like, don't say it. It's casual. People say it. A lot of people may say it. Their head is hurting. Their kid is it's killing them. Look, I'm not saying deny the pain. I'm not talking about that part. But we got to watch the word for saying it. Let's look at the proof text. Uh, Psalm 141 and 3, New King James Version. Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the doors of my lips. If words weren't important, why would God put them in there? Why? Why would he want us to do that? Because he understands the importance of words. He doesn't want you to experience something negative. Because, you know, there's a lot of scriptures God could have put in the Bible. He could have left this out. Seems like it might be kind of important. Again, God's part, our part. Proverbs 16, 23, New King James Version. The heart of the wise teaches his mouth. And as learning to his lips. Again, if words weren't important, why would God put this in here that our mouths need to be taught? Because we could just arbitrarily and whatever, casually, just go around saying all that we want to say. But God understands God was the one that created us. I think he knows best of how we best function. He's the author and manufacturer of us. So I think, like the instructions manual, he knows how we operate, and he knows that's going to be negative for my creation, so I want to teach them something so that they don't do something negative for their own lives. The heart of the wise teaches us now. If there wasn't a need, why would it be in the Word? All right, so five areas. Five areas of teaching guard our tongue. Five areas of teaching guard our tongue. Are right, you ready? Number one, not speaking death or, or negative words. You reference 1 Peter 3 and 10. Proverbs 6 and 2, New King James Version. You are snared by the words of your elbow. You are taken by the words of your mouth. This is some scriptures, guys, making a point like this whole verbal thing is important to God. We're snared by the words of our mouths. When you're in faith about something, we're going to go through this in the faith series, but when we're, when we're in faith about something, our words need to be in line with what the Word of God is and what we pray for. Yeah. You're trying to be a cheerleader. Don't sign a form, ask God to be a cheerleader, and then walk away and say, I ain't going to make it. That's right. right. Our words are seed. You just dug up your seed. No, you need to be saying, well, for, for females, I'm going to be a cheerleader. Did I, did I, did I do the high voice? <laughs> That's all it looked like. He didn't do the high voice right. But you know, females would be like, look, I'm going to be a cheerleader. Look, they got to confess that. Does that make sense? Look, otherwise you're snared by the words of your mouth, okay? All right, so again, not speaking death words, you want to speak words of life, okay? All right, so that first area where you got to teach and guard tongue, okay? All right, number two, not receive. Receiving negative words and thoughts. So first is not speaking negative words. God bless you. First is not speaking negative words. Number two is not receiving. And we talked about receiving before, right? We said receiving is uh, both seeing and agreeing. Both being seeing, seeing and agreeing uh, was not physically here right now, but in the sphere of realm. So we can't receive negative words. And that comes in two ways. One, directly through people. So if people say, uh, you know, you ain't going to pass that SAT test, or you ain't going to pass that GRE or that LSAT test. No, you're going to say, that's some devil, I didn't even know it. You know what I mean? So that's, that's a direct. So if someone's speaking something negative directly to you or about you or your family, don't receive that. You got to say, I don't, I don't, you got to blatantly say, I don't receive that. I don't receive that. That's not part of me. That's not part of my, I don't receive it. I don't care how loud you say it, but say it. You can say it softly. You can say it loudly. But make it clear. And guess what? You ain't trying to prove nothing to them. This is between you and God. Why? Because if they, they may have good or bad intent. When people come up to you and say, oh, 
Your little child, he just turned two years old. Oh, you're going to have some terrible twos. You're going to say, I don't receive that. They may have good intent. Their intent might be to say, hey, here's a heads up. The next 365 days might be challenging. They may have good intent. But you're on a different walk or you're further in your walk in that particular area than they are. And you got to say, I don't receive that. It's not God. Where, where is that in Scripture that there's terrible to? Let me see. Is that in John? Is that Mark? Don't receive that. No, no, no. We're going to train our child the way it should go. No, I don't receive that. You can say it loud. You can say it soft. But what you're saying is you're not receiving it and you're being in line with God saying, God, I heard that, but I'm not receiving it. Amen. Amen. And then that's directly, and then number, and then B, the number, and B is indirectly. Indirectly is, you know, you're just, you're just home, watching TV, when you're in a car, with the radio. That's indirectly. They may, not, they may not be speaking directly to you, but if you're hearing negative words, you have to do something with it, because if not, it can linger and then get into your heart, and then sometime later on, you can start believing that thing. You can start believing that everybody with diabetes dies. Because it comes to commercial. With good intent, they got all the medicine, they got my queens and pharmaceutical sales reps. It's like 10 billion medicines out there. Have y'all noticed that just in the natural world? Like, they was an age thing, but I was like, yeah, you see like a for all these different prescriptions and medicines back in the day. But they exist. My point is, the their intent probably is to, is to try to help the, the pain. We know God does the core. God does the new with the core issue. But if you are around and you're hearing um, the radio or TV or someone else, you gotta, and those words are trying to come indirectly, you gotta not receive those either. You gotta be active and do something with it. So, so what does that, you know, you know, what does that mean? So when guys be watching football, and all of a sudden you may see some cheerleader or whatever, yeah, I don't receive that. My wife, my wife is beautiful, I'm good. And why is a virtuous woman? You gotta not receive it. Yeah. Any way those things are trying to come, well, uh, 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 I ain't receiving that. And how you do that? I rebuke that in Jesus' name. Yeah. When those words are trying to come directly and indirectly, I rebuke that in Jesus' name. Well, I don't receive that in Jesus' name. Uh, you the scripture, 10,000 may fall, but shall not come nigh me. It may be a Christian. It may be a Christian that may have transitioned, let's just say because of cancer. That doesn't mean that that's going to be you. Right. You gotta say ten thousand people, but you're not coming out of me. I don't care who it is. Right, right. You can reference for proof text. You can reference Luke one thirty five and Psalm ninety one and seven. I said that's two areas we gotta teach and guard. We have to be raw. You learn. We have to teach our tongues, right? Or teach our mouths. Two areas that we have to teach our mouths and our tongues. All right. Number three, not speaking to one, not not speaking negative words, not receiving deaf words. And then now we're talking about not speaking idle words. These are all different areas. Not speaking idle words. We're already talking about barren words, inactive, useless. All right? And so in the scripture, I'll say it again. Matthew 12, 36 through 7, New King James Version. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak. That's women too. That's, that's mankind. It's, it's so y'all think y'all can say what y'all want to do. Women. All right? It's mankind. And men may speak. They will give an account of it. They will give an account of it in the day of judgment. That's for the Christians. Yeah. For by your word you will be justified, by your word you will be condemned. So again, so let's from this day forward be intentional about the word we speak. That right. doesn't, okay. So uh, this is not God, God is not trying to say that every word has to be harsh and mean and serious and unfigured. But well, we gotta make sure we ain't walking around just saying words that we don't mean. Idle words. Yeah. If we've done it before, ask God forgive us and just move forward. That's fine. But just move forward from this point on. Because now we're getting some learning. Because now, guess what? We're getting held accountable. Because yeah. we heard it. Right. So that day of judgment, you can't be like, I didn't know I wasn't supposed to say that. How am I supposed to say that? Back on September 1st, what's it is there? 25th, 2022, I think I spoke that meal to you to not do it. Number, all right, so here's a few common idle words. Uh-oh, your leg is killing me. 
you sick. Why is your sick? Now, it's a, it may be a fact that your, your body is going through something. So we're not saying, don't deny, like you don't want to lie. Does that make sense? We understand your body may be going through something. But the Bible says, by Jesus' stripes you're healed. So a revelation, real things could be like, if I'm already healed, then my prayer is that God removes the sickness from my already healed body. When you're saying you're sick, you're equating that to who you are. You're not sick, you're healed. You may have a, a sickness channel in your body, but no, 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 that's leaving my already healed body. You like it, guy? All right, um, I'm, I'm sick and tired. You're going to be sick and tired or something. <laughs> Come on now. Oh, oh here, here's my, my allergies. Look, your allergies have nothing to do with you. They're not yours. Don't claim ownership. I, I understand that you may have an allergic reaction to pollen, to pet dander. I get that. But call it that. Man, I have an allergic reaction. I had an allergic reaction today to pet dander boom. But don't claim it as a lifestyle. One, you can believe that God removes out the allergic reactions. And the two, don't claim them as mine. No, no, no. So are allergies the same as your son? You say, that's my son. My allergies. Don't claim that. Simple you to death, all right? It's hard to make it. Broke as a joke. Maybe I stop saying these things, all right? I'm starving. Really? Really? <laughs> Died laughing. Again, remember that runner in that ship? Over time, these things have been back over time. Yeah. All right, this is a, this is a few common ones. Also, let me pull up really, your spirit is designed to be moved by your words. So if you keep saying these idle words, your spirit is not going to know whether to take you seriously or not. You keep saying these idle words, and you're like, ah, oh, I don't mean it. Well, then when it comes time for you to, you know, pray for Cousin Susie, or you're trying to get a new job, yeah. you sure is like, this one of those times you play it, or where, where, right. well, where are you? All right. All right. So you want, to, you want to make sure you're intentional with your words and you're serious about it. All right? All right? Now, number four, fourth area. Fourth area of teaching guard. Tell them, if you understand, we got to teach our mouths, right? This is the thing we're teaching them. Number four. Speak proactive life words, confessions. Create your future. Create your destiny. Yeah. Create your destiny with your words. So we talked about things we shouldn't you know, speak, things we shouldn't receive, not doing idle words. Now, on a positive side, let's proactively speak some life words. If you got desire, if you, okay, cool, Lord Jesus. So if you are a single lady and you desire to one day be married, you need to pray and be in faith and you need to speak that. Start thinking about, we talked about this before, this is for single men and single women. Look, if you are a Christian, look for the spirit character stuff first. And then the preference is second. Too often, we get enamored by the preferences. Tall, dark, white, black, built, all the, all we get so caught up in there that we don't pull back the curtain to see the character. Yeah, right, right. Right. Come on, come on. God doesn't have anything wrong with your preferences. There ain't nothing wrong with whatever your preferences are. Right now. But God's just saying, put that in the right context. Yeah. Oh my God. Right? So, we, so ladies, so if you're, you're, ladies and men, right now I'm speaking to the ladies. If you are currently unmarried and you have a desire to be married, use the same faith you did for the misplaced keys. Ask God for it in faith and be speaking it. Start seeing the husband that you want. Start seeing that character that he loves Christ as he loves the church. Yeah. Oh my God. You want some, uh, let me tell you something. <laughs> you won't want somebody that loves themselves some Jesus. Yeah. Because when they love Jesus, young ladies, they are then going to, you are going to get the overflow of their love for Jesus. Yeah. And same thing to you, young man. Hallelujah. You want that. You want that. Don't. Hallelujah. You want a prayer project. Yeah. Woo! Say that. Don't pray. You want Look. Talk to a young lady that used to be on a youth ministry yesterday. 
And she's older, a little older now. She's in her 30s. I'm like, that's my age. Yeah, 52, 52. All right, so anyway, so she's a little older. She was like, look, nice guy, everything's cool. She said, but he's not where I need him to be. So I said, well, you know, sometimes when we first can say, you know, everyone's at a different place in their walk. You know, you might be more mature in one area than they are, but they might be more mature in other areas than you are. So it's, you're walking together in marriage, well, in, in courting, then in marriage, um, as your individual walk and growth and development occurs. That's a good thing, all right? But they're not even at that foundation level. They receive Jesus. Mm. Yeah. I you want to obey the word. Don't be unequally yoked. Okay. So, yeah. All right, back and forth. So, so ladies, you want to speak life over those things, okay? All right? So, there's some examples. Joel 3 and 10. Let the weak say I'm strong. This goes back to the whole, your sick thing. No, 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 no. You may have a sickness in your body. Don't deny it. Here, you can't deny your toe may be broken. Okay, we get that. All right. But follow, you keep calling it. Father is healed. That toe operates the way it's supposed to operate. You keep speaking life over that. Let the weak say I'm strong. Is what the word says. It's not saying the weak doesn't understand they may be physically weak, but they're calling forth what they are, what they need to be. And this is not just some esoteric stuff. This is, you're speaking with life. You're trying to get that spirit to do some things in that body. Amen? All right, Psalm 45 and 1. The tongue is the pen of a ready writer to write your future, write your destiny, all right, with your tongue. Deuteronomy 28 and 13. And y'all you know, hear this because Alyssa does it every week. The head, not, well, she references the scripture. We're the head, not the tail. We're above and not beneath. Receive that for yourself. Amen? And you speak that over yourself. Speak that over your kids and your family. Job 22 and 28. You can decree a thing and it shall be established. Woo! Isn't that powerful, Arnie? You can decree a thing and it shall be established. Amen. I mean, you probably need to be watching what you're decreeing. Amen? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, and then number five. These are just five years where we got teaching our mouths, all right? Number five, remove non-kingdom words from our vocabulary. Right, right, right. Huh. How about you? We're doing negative words, not receiving negative words, not doing idle. Okay, and speaking positive words, what are non-kingdom words? Something told. Now, I, we all may have eaten that. But when you get revelation then, when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have the Holy Spirit with you. And certainly then, if you don't receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you have him within you with the power uh, to advance the kingdom of God. That, let's change that something. Let's get revelation. That something is no longer something. That something is the Holy Spirit. Holy, we learned in our series, Holy Spirit is not an it. Holy Spirit is not a force. Holy Spirit is a he. He is telling you to do this thing. So this is from a revelation perspective, let's remove something told me out. No, the Holy Spirit told me this. It also lose my level of accountability, too. I like that. He's like, I can't get out of it. Because the Holy Spirit told me to do it. I can't say something told me. The wind told me. No, yeah, the Holy Spirit told me. Yeah, I guess I need to do it. Okay. All right. The word can't. Shh. I can't do it. Shh. Out of your vocabulary as a believer. Does that line up with the word is that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you? We're teaching our mouths. Yeah. When you first went to first grade, or whenever you learn one plus one, you didn't know it before then. You're being taught. That's okay. That's okay. These are things we had to be taught. We're teaching our mouths. We don't have bad days as believers. Bible says it's going to rain on the just and the unjust. We may have challenges in our day. Amen. But we don't have bad days. Mm-hmm. You ain't never had a 20, as a believer, you ain't never had a 24 hour per second in bad day. Never. One, you're alive. Yeah. That washes everything up. That just negates you having a bad day. Yeah. Now, you may have challenges. Don't get me wrong. Challenges will come to be on this earth and the, the fall of Adam. But even through those challenges, whether it's one, ten, sometimes those challenges seem consecutive to like a crack hour. But I guess what? There's going to be some hope throughout there, because that's what peace is. Peace is not this thing's nice. Peace is when you got that calm through the storm. That's what peace is. So you got that, you got that peace, and it's certainly throughout, and afterwards, you want to see a bright day. It's all good. So as believers, we don't have bad days. 
Bad moments, bad challenges in the day? Yep. Yeah. Your entire day in the day. You will find something to glorify God. In fact, if nothing else, like I said, if nothing else, you allow. If nothing else. I know there's other good stuff in there. Let's give you a basic. Alright? Uh-oh. Everybody say, honk, honk. Let's do it again. Honk, honk. Remove luck on your vocabulary. When we give the word luck power, we are giving something other than God glory for something. When blessed things happen to you, call them blessings. Thank God. And call them that. Yeah. You can reference the scriptures, Jay. Not just because I said it, because like we can say in this church, you don't want you to be like the Bereans. You go back and study to make sure what you heard was true. I just believe it's because of the past it says, and you go back and look at the word and see what the word says. All good and perfect things are from above. So if something good happened to you, oh, no more saying you was lucky. That was a blessing. And sometimes, and people sometimes with good intent will say, hey, well, good luck on your test. You, you don't receive the luck to say, thank you for your heart. Because you, you understand their heart was to say something good. Okay, you want to crush them? Just say, thank you, thank you, I appreciate, appreciate your heart. That's what their heart is. They may not know yet not to say those words, or they may not be a Christian yet. But you, you don't ever give anything glory to God. You don't ever give anything glory that belongs to God. Let's remove the luck. Okay. Things we're removing non kingdom words from our vocabulary. Okay. All right. So we good? Everybody cool? Yeah. We good? Removing the luck? Okay. Got some luck out? Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you, baby. Thank you, baby. <laughs> Woo. Okay. All right. I, yeah. <laughs> let me just talk about idle words here. Let me just talk about idle words. Okay. All right. All right. So here's a life for me. Here's a life for me. Us as people, songs, etc., we gotta understand that we are a warehouse of seeds that, in, that have destiny impact with regards to our words. So that being the case, always look at this formula. Um, you know, those impact words are either gonna be from God or from the enemy. Yeah. So what you gotta do is use the formula. Like always remember this: words get into your ear gate, get into the heart, get into the mouth, get into the life. If you think with that formula. That goes for God, and that will go for the enemy. Here again, heart. I'm not talking about the blood pump, I'm talking about the spirit enemy. Mouth and life. Yeah. You want these seeds to be for God, and not us to be the storehouse for the enemy. Use that for me. Amen. Amen. All right, give God some glory. Yeah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Father, we just, as often, we want, we want to make sure that we are taking a learning, we are even saying that we are to be doers of the word, not just here, to make sure we